Hi there! So I am out here today back on my side garden here and we are going to prune back the wine and roses wajilla. So they quit blooming, I don't know, maybe like a week or two ago and I just have to get out here and trim them back. So the thing with these is if I trim them back right after they bloom, they usually will put on another flush of blooms for me before the season is over. And then another typical rule of thumb is if you are going to prune these, you want to prune them, like I said, right after they're done blooming because right after they're done blooming, they start setting buds for the next season. They bloom on old wood. So what happens is right now they will start putting energy into creating buds for next spring. And so you don't want a chance cutting off that set of buds. Uh, for the next spring so you just want to get out here and get to it as soon as you can and you should be good to go but I really love these ones because like I said sometimes they give me another little set of blooms before the season is over so that's awesome all right well let's get at these and I think I'm just going to go in and take about a foot off of them uh, they're about four and a half feet tall right now so I'll take about you know, I'll, I'll take them down to about three and a half to, to four feet. All right, let's get to it. I am gonna go down and grab my green garden bag. So I can't remember what shed I put it in, but we'll find it. I'm so excited about this area. I'm getting sidetracked, but... Yes, this is gonna be a fun area for me to just kind of put all my stuff in. Whoa! Where is it? Oh, it's an indicator. Let's walk out through my path. That's much better. They are nice and tidy. Look how pretty those astobi are. Starting to bloom. I think that's visions in pink. But yeah, hopefully this will kind of spruce up a little bit and have a little bit more life now that those are tame and nice and rounded. And then hopefully my impatience will start blooming here soon. I just planted these this weekend. Or wait, when did I plant those? I don't remember. <laughs> oh, you guys. Okay, look at that Francis William pasta. It is so pretty. And that hydrangea is out of control. I don't know if you can tell, but it's massive. I'm gonna need to come in here and take some splits off of it, and I'll show you guys how I do that. But here, I'm gonna go stand by it just so you can see how big it is. It's huge. Like I have, oh my gosh. <laughs> it's huge. See, this is just a little tiny split started out a few years ago. And I actually have like really pretty, you know, purple palace heuchera under here. I have one, two, three of them and it just is taking over. Uh, so this is a good example right here. I'll try to get closer, but there's one little 
guy who is like coming off on his own and what I do is I just shove my shovel into it <laughs> and there's little tiny roots that are coming off of it and I'll plant that and it will become huge. Alright so those wajela are done. I am gonna go on the other side of my house and just quickly cut back a few perennials that are done blooming and uh i think i got well poppies and some more irises the siberian the purple siberian iris so i'm gonna cut those back so i'm not like a huge poppy fan uh just because i they're gorgeous don't get me wrong i i love them but they only bloom for so long and then after they're done blooming they just look really trashy but i planted a couple of them because my grandpa who passed away we didn't call him grandpa we called him poppy that's his name poppy i mean that wasn't his name but that's what we called him and instead of grandpa and so i was like I just kind of want to plant some for Poppy. <laughs> but anyway, it's time to cut them back. And we'll also cut back the um, Siberian iris too while we're here. So this is one of my poppies and I've got another one over there. I usually take like this back completely to the ground, like the foliage and everything, but the foliage isn't that bad right now. So I think I'm just going to cut back these blooms but this was so pretty I I'll throw a picture on the screen so you can see what it looked like when it was blooming and this one was that like you know deep orange color with the black middle and then my other one over there was is like a kind of more peachy orange color which that one is really pretty too but like I said they just don't bloom for very long and I can't be bothered. The only reason I planted it is my grandpa. But I don't think the foliage looks that bad right now. So we'll just do this and let it go until it gets really hot. And then when it starts getting uh, really, really hot and humid, this will start dying back and looking gross. And then I'll just hack it completely off. <laughs> So this one, I am, I started cutting it already right there, you can see. I'm gonna, in fact, cut this one all the way back because it's like leaning over into my cone flower there and it's just not gonna do anything for the rest of the year. It's just gonna keep getting worse. So I'm gonna hack that one back completely. Actually, now that I say that, I noticed this one is leaning into a flax that I have right there. So I am going to hack it back. It looks better from the other side because all the green foliage is right there. But I just, I know me and I'm not going to want to stare at this crap. So, give it a hack. fun while it lasted. All right, now I'm gonna do these Siberian irises. that looks a lot better um yeah this 
little bed has kind of been like a dumping ground for me with just plants I don't really know where to put, uh, plants I got super cheap on clearance and I didn't have anywhere to go with them. So there's some flax in there. I think I'm gonna tear those out. There's Minarda that's just not doing the greatest. I'm gonna tear that out. And hopefully this summer I can like kind of get a rhyme and reason to what's going on in this bed and add some more color like, like you know, darker reds or purples uh, and blues and stuff like that. I just haven't really done anything with it, but we will get there eventually. Sprinklers are on. All right, that looks so much better. I gotta dump this crap. Yes, I'm good for it. <laughs> Just how I roll, guys. I can't be bothered with shoes. I literally wear shoes all winter long in Michigan. <laughs> and Come on, buddy. And Michigan winters are like nine months long, so we can't do shoes after nine months. Thank you so much for watching and I hope that that encouraged you a little bit to just get out in your garden and do a few minor maintenance things uh, like cutting some perennials back and trimming back a shrub that's going to set blooms for next year. Um, some of these things we kind of put off and put off and then three days goes by and four days in a week and it's like oh I sh probably should have done that like a week ago but that's okay just get out there and do what you can and the next day do what you can sometimes my only times that I have to garden is on my lunch break so um, <laughs> that's that's just life that's the way it is but and then also like don't be afraid to hack things back if you just don't like the way it looks Sometimes it's better to not have anything there than something that's like fallen over or dead or browning or past bloom. So don't be afraid to get your scissors out, get your pruners out and hack it back. All right, well, hopefully you had a great day and I'll see you later. Thanks for watching, bye.